Hello, this is Hawk Devine, and today we are going to be reading r slash D&D stories. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. That was fast. Anyway, my D&D &D group is out to get me. That sounds a little paranoid, OP. So, I just want to know if I'm overreacting here. I'm about to leave this group because of how much they're making me hate the game of D&D. So I need ad advice like, if you don't like the group that much, stop playing with them. Because that's already the plan. So, I'm in this group as the only girl with five boys. I say boys because they never actually act like adults. Okay. They're all older than me. We're playing Curse of Strahd with me, the forever DM. Finally getting to play a player character. I was really excited and didn't want to stress out the DM by coming up with some crazy builds, so I went for the silly, this will be fun to play route. I made him a barbarian that was a bare totem barbarian. Because that, because what's fun, you're then the smallest one in the party being able to smack people with giant axes. This is where the problem started. I made this little barbarian and everyone elected me the meat shield, which is fine in a sense. I'm the barbarian, that is part of my job. But it started to become an issue when the DM decided to just never go after another PC. I was the only one that ever took damage by anything that wasn't an AoE ability. Which again, I thought was me doing my job well, people were focusing on me so the rest of the party it could attack. Then we were heading then we were heading to the Abbey of Saint Mark Ovia with Irina, and my DM decided to put a blacksmith's caravan in the middle of the path. Because his friend was complaining about how few magic items he had. We were level four and he already had three rare items. The party then argued back and forth about taking the caravan back first so we could get gear and I was saying we're so close to the Abbey, let's just go. Which made them all pissed off because I had a whopping two magic items. Hill Giant Belt and Braces of Defense. Ooh. And then I was already geared up and everyone else needed stuff. Which I understand in a way, but I also looked at... On onto d and Beyond. I was the only one that had taken any damage that day. I was down to 12 HP and everyone else was at full because they begged the cleric to use his spell slot to heal them and I kind of just went, alright, I can take it, don't worry about me. Now during them yelling at me and about how they got scratched while I sit here with my guts pouring out, I look over at the DM who I expect to have my back because everyone is screaming at me and I realize something. I have been crit on 6 different times in that one encounter. He had rolled 6 natural 20s in a row. Now, I'm not great at math, so if someone wants to tell me the odds of that, I'd appreciate it. But I'm so sure he was lying on his rolls to get me in to go down. Everything's AC has been harder than I could hit without rolling a 19 or 20. And things I as forever DM knows should not have had as much HP just never seem to go down. Now, I know people tweak stat blocks all the time. I do it too. That's not what I'm upset about. I'm upset because I feel like everyone at the table is out to get me. Now, I'm on a mission to get my little gnome barbarian killed because I'm thinking maybe if this is going to be the case, I could try a new character and maybe enjoy it more. I tried just asking the DM if I could change characters and I got guilted into holding out. Finally, I managed to kill her off, but I don't, don't even finish rolling all my death saves, and the one guy at my table, the friend whose magic item count is up to 8, immediately jumps in and goes, I take all her magic items. As 
I, as a player, not as a character, had to work really hard to get. Because DM did not want me to have any items. I thought DM, I'd rather anyone else at the table take my items because they were actually fair with them. And I get yelled at by DM and his friends that I don't get a say because I'm dead. They refuse to understand the, and what I'm telling them. Not my absolute benefit of rogue and heavy armor because they all play off my unarmored defense and my strength. So why does he want them anyway? If not to hold over my head. He has some more attunement slots. They don't benefit him. And he already has more items than ever, anyone else in the party. I didn't give up and tell him to do whatever they want with my items because I just want to play and I bring my, in my paladin bard. I was really excited about uh, just for everyone to immediately try to kill her as soon as she out showed up. Am I overreacting here or is this whole table out to get me? Yeah, I'd leave the table. But yeah, let's see what the comments say here. <laughs> You're not overreacting, these people sound awful. No D&D is better than bad D&D, and honestly, this just seems like bad D&D. The odds of rolling 6 crits are ridiculously low. But I've seen it happen using online dice rollers, but combined with the fact that you are the only one target is what raises is my suspicions. It could also be that the DM is trying to play into your character archetype as a meat shield. So I'd ask about them. Uh, I'm about, so I'd ask them about it and decide. The rogue player just seems like an asshole, and honestly, I'd have a conversation with them about how even in though your character er, is dead, you as a player still have a say in how the story goes. This would be the, in the realm of, of beneficial metagaming, like how you make characters who stick together as a party, and how everyone has mutual understanding of not being a dick so that everyone and has fun. Yeah. Pretty much, this party is toxic. Run. <sighs> D is ruining the D in D and D. Well, if that made any sense to you, I think that maybe the rest of my video did not. I have been playing in and running games for over 20 years. I used to have a group of friends I ran for and so do, but I moved to a new area that was dead for RPGs, and I have been working to get RPGs going in that area. I say all this because I have run into a player I just can't deal with. Let me give you some background. I started running in Descent into Avernus, but with several revisions based on research I did. This player will kill all D heard about the game and asked to join. I asked him to give me an idea for his character and he said he wanted to play a young Dragonborn Druid. How young, I did not realize. He wanted to play a childlike Dragonborn who walks on all fours and acts like a cat. It took me some time to figure out the character, but it dawned on me he was playing Toothless from How to Play how to train your dragon. That's just cute, honestly. I'm okay with Odd, but a child felt weird for a game in hell. I said as much, but he said he could roll with the adventure and adapt. He never did. He continued to play the game in this way. Talking broken senses and doing generally childlike things. I could be okay with it as there are some lighter elements and descended to the awareness, but what drove me nuts was his inability to retain any knowledge. In character or out of character, because I have some memory problems that in, in real life. This game has a lot of quest givers that ram NPCs and side quests, and you will take notes but never put down how the character related. This led to weekly recaps that I wouldn't mind if you wouldn't ask four minutes later for me to explain it again. This continued for the entire game. We finished the adventure a few weeks ago, and even in the last session, he didn't understand who Zariel was.
As the game ended, we discussed going further, and I was convinced to run Chains of Asmodeus. This is when I thought maybe his character could be rotated out. Several players had decided to end their prior character stories. The did not. In fact, he convinced the other players to donate their magic items to him. He promised to share them with the new party, but that changed when he said it all went to his horn. Finally, what got me and ha as me fed up is how disgusting he is. He has very poor hygiene and is rude. He has told me and others how to run or play the game. He has told me why his character's magic items don't shift into his new form so he can use them, or he tells the other players how to play their characters. I have told those players to ignore him and do what they want. He has a motor mouth. Hey, we read about a guy named Motor Mouth. And just blatters on and on about how his character does whatever, and I just don't care. But he grosses me out as he does all this while burping and farting. He l looks just like the WoW guy from the South Park episode. Oh, I know that one. World of Warcraft. That guy. That is a good reference. Problem is, I can't just kick him. He is friends with other people in the community and I fear he'd just badmouth me and ruin me in the area. I'm not, oh I'm not doing great as I have become very annoyed with him and I have let this seep into the game. I'm sure with him especially, but also I get, up, I get fed up fast. I am just thinking of ending the game and just not inviting him to another game. So that's my horrible story. Your horror story. Yeah. Absolutely awful. Twenty year old or er, er, er D and D oh twenty year D and D veterans still don't know how to make the game fun. I'm ready to D and D. And I just attended my first ever session recently. It was much weirder than I anticipated, so I wanted to share. If any of the e players involved see this, hi guys! I had fun on this campaign, so oh no shade toward anyone, but it was super weird, right? Can we talk about this and get on track for the next session? Thanks. Wow, OP is actually e e e e calling out at their previous. That our party. That is insane. Anyway. To set the stage, I am a woman on the younger side of the D&D &D audience. All the people invite, involved are men, in case that paints a clearer picture here. I got invited to join this, a new campaign run by a man who has been DMing and contributing to, to the local scene since the 70s. Super nice guy. Clearly knows how to run a fan campaign. We talked ahead of time and laid out very clear directions about for how I should make my character in the backstory. The players, 20 plus year or er, the er, in the er, veteran playing a wizard, 20 plus year or er, the veteran playing a cleric, younger first time player playing a monk, me first time player playing a barbarian. Did you notice that the veterans are playing magic equivalent classes while the e first time players are playing in um melee classes? I notice, and I have a feeling that this DM might be the, a pro might be making it really boring for them by not letting them have something as cool as. Casting magic. I tried to do my research so I could be as prepared as possible and come up with a good character who could adapt to whatever the party ended up being like. So I didn't cause any friction. 
I prepped for every possibility that didn't involve hurting to act as a pos as a party a leader, since I knew that we'd have veterans who would, I assumed, know what they were doing and would lead the party. That's foreshadowing for later. Well, you've ruined it by saying that, but okay. As we're introducing our party, I ask our cleric what a domain he is, since he didn't say. Oh. Oh, no domain. Just cleric. My deity is just... I don't know. One of the regular good ones. Alright. Weird. I guess maybe I'm taking a... In character creation too seriously. I back off. Our wizard describes himself as a wizard who whose spells sometimes don't work. Note inf oh, our characters are young, so I guess this makes sense, but I was still expecting people to have more to say. A wizard whose spells sometimes don't work? That's literally in, in, in nothing. All wizards have a chance to not have their spells work. Do their spells sometimes just go chaotic? Because that's more of a source for a thing. Our monk, the other new guy, goes into more detail, but we read several times and said he is a chaotic neutral. Fucking hell. The game opens the story with an inciting event of a special salesman putting on a big promotional show for his unique oceans in town square. None of our characters who live in this town have explicitly met yet. He asks each of us if and when we're going to attend this event, clearly trying to get the party in one place. Cleric. Nope, I'm staying home. Why? Just go! You should know better. Monk. I might go, but I'm a bit chaotic and my character's lazy, so I'm sleeping in and going late. Oh my goodness. What well, very in me. I am attending. My character has several reasons to check this out. Wizard, I'm on the roof of a building in the town square, and I'm sneaking so no one can see me. These are really bad players so far. Uh, okay. Wizard, roll stealth. Eight. While well, you're on the roof in a crowd area, people in the crowd spot you as they gather. Oh gosh. No, but I'm crouching, and I have stealth proficiency. There's no way for anyone to see me from the ground. Alright, I guess you're not seen. You're just sitting up on the roof while Barbarian is in the crowd watching the show. The DM just went along with it? Whatever. Now, I don't think this is the entirely the, the, the DM's fault here. Event progresses. Monk shows up late as promised. He drinks multiple samples that are being handed out of the suspicious potion. It's generally hilarious, and I get excuses to begin having our characters interact as he reacts to the potion's effects. I'm having fun. Wizard out of nowhere. I used my action to cast shatter on all the glass balls that still have potions in them. And then I jump off the building and use my reaction to cast Featherfall. I land on the ground and I sneak away and nobody sees. Wait, stop, hold on. You're slowly following from the building. Literally 
Everyone in town, in the town square sees you. No, no, I jump off the other side of the building, no one sees me. Well, there are people over there too, it's the center of town. People see you. I roll stealth, 18. I didn't tell you to roll stealth, but fine. The potion bottles explode extremely loudly. You sneak away. At least no one who, who saw the explosion occur saw you cast a spell. But several townsfolk do see you fall off a building and walk away. Events continue. Our cleric shows up to the town center only after other folks have left and starts playing detective about these suspicious potions by himself. Wizard player is saying nothing at all. At this point, we've been playing for a while and two of our characters have never even seen each other. So I start trying to get us together. Cleric was at the magic shop in town, asking the clerk if he knew owes what's in these potions. As he gets his answers, my character decides to go to the magic shop for the same reason. Cleric leaves before my character gets there to interrogate someone else. Okay, fine. Hey monk, when these guys pack up their stuff and leave, I'm going to tell them. They don't need to brew more of these potions, and I want to know how and where they do that. Will you join in lat? Join me? Yes, absolutely. Let's go! We start leaving town and the wizard and cleric just suddenly decide to join the party with no explanation or introduction. I try to speak in character to them and they don't engage back with me. Okay, how the hell are you playing D&D for 20 years and not role-playing? I get that some people have a hard time. But you at least act a little bit like you who have a character in the game. DM says that there's a gate near with a guard that will have to pass by on our way out of town. It's an interesting problem to solve that would require we either sneak, talk, fight our way hey, through, who knows? Hey, barbarian, look, see that hole over there? We can totally crawl through there without being seen. That's right. The wizard has just decided that there's a hole nearby. The M doesn't argue with this. What? Everyone else crawls through the hole, so I follow. We make it to the camp where the people are making the potions. Hiding a ways away, Wizard begins shouting threats to stay away at the potion makers from the dark. <laughs> Finally, he has an opinion on what we do as a team. Ask what he wants me to do about this guy. Are we believe that this guy is a powerful spell outcaster. If you can get up close and restrain his hands, he will be able to cast it in his spells. Can you do that? Yes, absolutely. On it. Our cleric sneaks up up on the camp and is about to get caught, so I rush in and start trying to subdue the spellcaster. I successfully grapple him and I shout to our wizard, Alright, I got him, what's your move? I do nothing. Nothing? You don't want to go oh help. This was your plan. Nope, I do nothing. I'm still stealth because I'm in the dark.
<laughs> the fight proceeds. Me and the cleric slowly bring the guy down. I'm sorry, I'm like actually reading ahead of it. The guy is shoulder cut and repeatedly stabbed the cleric. Our chaotic monk enters and fights no one, instead opting to free all of the tied up horses and throwing a lit torch at the wooden wagons that people live and work out of. He rolls bad and misses the wagon. And the torch starts and the torch lights the grass on fire. One of the children who was standing right there is incidentally lit on fire. It's chaos. It's horrible. Our wizard is still doing nothing. DM has an on-fire child screaming and yelling, run directly in the direction of the wizard to see if he'll do anything. He does not. I, currently still raging berserker barbarian and IRL angry person, run up to the wizard and ask why he isn't doing anything. Because this was his plan. Players respond by laughing at me for not helping the on-fire child on my way over. I think that my character is much less capable of him than him. Okay. Wizard eventually puts the child out with his wizard world. I think my barbarian doesn't have. Cleric heals her by force feeding her a health potion. Not to be a healing spell. This is what is what happens when you don't pick a cleric domain. You have no spells. We find the, the gold that the drug maker or drug the town into giving him. I mean, the push maker drug the town into giving him. As planning on to bring him back to town, but the monk takes his share and buries it in the ground miles away from the town. Wizard player says he wants to do nothing with, he wants nothing to do with this, and continues to not even walk over to where this is happening. He's still in the grass, in the dark. What? Our party members would need to succeed in for session checks so to even know where he is. I had to when do this when I ran over to him earlier, and he's not saying anything. Frustrated, I put the gold into a sack and began. And hauling it home. Monk and cleric follow. Wizard says nothing. No, he doesn't say the word nothing. He just says nothing. Demon begins wrapping up the session for the day, and only then does the wizard say he's walking back with us. Sorry this post is so long, but I was truly baffled by how my first D&D session went and wanted to vent. I had to take on so much more of a leadership role than I was expecting. Though most D&D players like, want to have their characters interact, why was it so hard to get everyone together? Does anyone have advice for if or how I should be behaving differently going forward? Yeah, I'll be real. As someone who actually does play D and D as a, a DM and a player, sometimes the wizard and cler and monk would piss me off. Okay, the whole entire I'm chaotic and neutral. Thing is just annoying. It's just an excuse to be, get away with with bad behavior. 
I've seen it used as that way too often. To the point where I'm leading on make on saying no, you can't be chaotic ink neutral. <sighs> Old story from one of my first games. This story was of an online D&D &D campaign, which was roughly one and a half to two years ago. It was one of the first campaigns I ever played of D&D. &D. I'm still a newbie. <laughs> Context! My friend was in their campaign. They saw me talking about an interest in the game and offered to ask. Shortly after, after I was invited. There were two players, my friend, the DM, and now me. Most of this comes from memory and old logs I have with a, a friend. So I have details of the bad parts due to my rants, but not many details of other factors. I messaged the DM privately to ask for help building my character, given it was a completely homebrewed world, asking for any tips. He told me that the world is set in the kingdom of wheat. Ruled by the Tyrant Queen. And uh, for my character to be someone who the party would have a, a reason to ally with. I asked for more information about the party's goal, like the party's goals, how the Queen is tyrannical, the nature of the kingdom, etc. And he just said, You'll find that out during the game. Worst team ever. Worst team ever. They need that information to make a character. Come on. So, based purely on that description, I assumed the campaign was to overthrow the queen. So, I made my character a rogue who is a one member of, of underground criminal connections within the kingdom. Dealing with illegal trading activity and so on. A morally gray character who would be someone on an anti establishment party would have reason to ally with regardless of their motives. Who is multiple to the story. I presented this to the DM and asked if it works and if there's any changes. He may said it's fine. I asked if I could be con even contextual knowledge of the setting given in my character's backstory. He just once again said, You'll find out as you play, which frustrated me a little. I'd walk away. I'd walk away. You have to give this information. I mean, this information is important for making the character and knowing how to roleplay them. I remember for the session showing my friend and they were a bit confused. So I mean, there's rarely any combat and it's usually just slice of life in the kingdom. I asked them about the Tyrant Queen and they just said, Oh, that's mostly flavor. So now, I was confused as the DM gave me the full green light, but I assumed maybe he's planning to twist the session so I don't, so I didn't speak further. Session came around, turns out the other two players were royal knights. Knights to the Tyrant Queen. That I was wanted by. To put it worse, the DM started it off with those two on duo patrol. My friend's character not present, and started an interaction with something along the lines of And he come face to face with the wanted man. I roll my character as immediately trying to de-escalate the situation from arrest, trying to appeal to them that the queen is a tyrant, to which DM began arguing in their place, talking about how she reduced crime to zero, reduced poverty to near zero, has a part parliament of the um, democratically chosen lawmakers, etc. Meanwhile, my character is a member of the illegal slave trade, not in my backstory at all.
I was confused and tried arguing back out of character. Especially for my character's dignity as a non-slave owner. To which he said, Oh, I'm just spouting off the propaganda of the town. Combat started, and I decided to flee, which was convenient as my race was someone who could fly. The two players aimed crossbows and fired, and their attack roll was a near critical failure. Yet the DM still demanded I make a deck saving throw, which I had succeeded massively. Even yet, where they failed their attack roll, and I succeeded a deck saving throw, when the situation with the switch switch being me 30 feet in the air from them and flying away at top speed and zigzagging. He still rolled it as them hitting me and destroying my left wing, just not taking any hit points. A long foot chase ensued and purely due to good dice rolls, I managed to escape. After I escaped, he said I'll have to take a back seat whilst the two players roleplay out the planned session since I fled. So I was left sitting on a Discord call for about two hours listening to them to play his D&D sessions whilst I couldn't do anything. Then he finally asked me, So, OP. What has your character been doing? So I said the obvious. Created distance, found somewhere safe to long rest, and asked if there's any other kingdoms, villages, anything I could have done. To which DM sighed and said, So you haven't even bothered thinking of anything? As a response to my question, he said it was it with such genuine frustration too. Which I remember feeling some sort of self doubt out over it as it was my first game, thinking, am I ruining the experience here? Though I also got pretty fed up with the campaign too. I eventually argued back after he went on about how he doesn't know what to do with my character if I'm not going to try. I mean, saying and how he can't expect me to do something and out in a world he tells me nothing about. To which he responded by effectively teleporting the other two players onto my person, where they had been tracking me in secret and ruling it they, that they would arrest me with no way for me to escape. At this point, my friend finally intervenes, and I remember being a little annoyed with them at how long it took. And so her character also gets put out in game in house arrest, even though her character didn't do anything, her disagreement was out of character. That was enough to make basically make her scoff and stop sticking up for me, not wanting her character to end up like mine who was charged with public execution. Or at least the DM said all this happened. It was never role played as I was arguing back with them out of character. Finalized it with, you're getting too heated that your character lost a combat exchange. It's D&D, it happens. Just because you're new doesn't mean you know, I was going to be nice to you, ice on you. Her, her phrasing from rough memory, obviously. Before the, acquiring the session has ended. I left the Discord Earth server and never contacted that group again. Proceed to friend my frustrations with my friend who still remained in the party and told me that they apparently killed off my character next session with the DM specifying and emphasizing that my character shit themselves upon death, which was just weird.
the hell? This DM sucks. I never really understood why the party was so unfair. Perhaps they were just a close-knit of friends who didn't really know how to play a game of D&D, and it was a snowball effect of miscommunication completely on their part, and an inability to create a good gaming experience for everyone outside of themselves. Though no, that's a bit charitable to give them, and in reality it could be a wide range of things. TLDR, Shady M led me into making a character while the other players would be poised into attacking to attack PvP. Got mad when I didn't appreciate it. God damn. Yeah, that game was just awful. My DM caused a tremor today. As I have a background, I should explain what my DM looks like. A douche. Like exactly what a douchebag would look like. His ha uh, he has tattoos all over, wears sunglasses and doors, and wears chains. And our big thing is he always shows up shirtless. We tell him every time he makes it uncomfortable, but he still does it because that's his idea of style. So as you can see, his idea of style is very important to him. This leads to today, Rad yesterday rather, last week's session, an hour DM left a coupon book at the table. Yeah, I don't know if it's a local thing, but it's one of those big coupon books that schools sell and fundraisers and such. It was full of many, many coupons. He left it at the table and one of the players thought it would be be fine to take one coupon since there were so many. He took a coupon for a hair salon play specifically. Yesterday at the game, we came and our DM exploded at all of us, screaming at us and accosting all of us because one single person took a single coupon. I do not condone the player's actions as it, it was a bit wrong, but it was only a, a one coupon out of a whole entire book, and it was only one of us who did it. Mind you, there are 13 of us. Oh my god! That's like the worst amount of people I've heard for a D&D game in a while. You need to be less than 5. Okay? Please. So yelling at us all oh, so violently seemed very unnecessary. Our DM banned the one who took the coupon and wrote his name in a book of, of banned players he keeps. He's completely insane, to be honest. That was my last session. Yesterday. Thirteen players. I can't even imagine. Yeah, he went insane probably from the stress of trying to run a thirteen player D&D game. If you never run into combat, that's freaking why. <sighs> New DM runs six person murder, murder hobo campaign. Complaints went over overwhelmed. Warning. Themes of abuse, gore, and piss? Okay. Posted on a burner, obviously. So a few years ago, I went to an unnamed college that happens to have a D&D club. I'm gonna call it... Rolling College. While soon run, it was professional. It was Professor Supervised, and he did not understand D&D, so he ended up letting as many people who wanted to join, join. 
That's bad. This would be fine if most of my college wasn't just our kids. So six people, including me, but excluding the GM, ended up joining. But a backstory, here are the important figures that will be crucial to the story. GM, my friend, but also a very inexperienced GM. Bard, a mentally unstable, violent, anger issue ridden person we had, had been fighting at the time. Paladin, a freshman, very enthusiastic but new to D&D. Oh, I feel bad for him. For them. Barbarian, also a freshman, friends of Paladin and just along for the ride. Druid, a very controlling and sexual person, constantly hit on me, best friends with Bard. Me, LP, a woman, will come in handy later. And a few randos that sometimes skipped. So, when GM saw the huge amount of players, he was obviously nervous, so I decided to do something rare. I became his assistant. I knew there wouldn't be much time for RP, even for a fully fleshed out character, so I didn't bother. Plus, he needed it. I helped hand out character sheets, play handbooks, people make backstories and look up spells. After two weekly sessions, characters were done and we were ready to start playing. The first red flag was when GM revealed to me that he had been taking story ideas from Druid. Huh. I brushed it off as simply being nice, since Druid was pretty experienced. They started in a tavern, for my recommendation, and had some pretty fun roleplay. But GM didn't really understand money, so he charged five gold pieces for a pint of beer. Which we just laughed at. I was having fun. GM let me play most characters since I was a VA for a few of my friends' projects. And the bartender was a fun voice to do. The problems are when the druid hit on the bartender. Insert age old remark about man playing woman as an excuse to hit on women. That sounds like transphobia, and I've heard of it. So, with permission, I slung a few remarks back, but Druid kept pushing. One thing about GM is he will never railroad, but the opposite. He is so lenient that he lets his players do anything, so he let them st I'm sorry, combat. A few turns later, and the bartender was beat up, but oh no, they weren't done. They pinned her to the ground, stopping on her face, and after a few lucky rolls, plunged a long sword down her throat. Blood pouring everywhere. Then Barbarian, no joke, whipped it out and peed on her corpse. I immediately took the DM aside, all but reprimanding him about why letting his players do this was not good GMing. The session indicated it after ended after Bard asked to have sex with the corpse. Funny thing, COVID hit it next week, forcing forcing us onto Discord. I wish this had saved me. So do I. Part two if this gets any attention. Part two because why not? The next session we have on Discord, and it was a thing. As for our request, GM decided to have the girl guards enter the bar, presumably to get some L after a long day of work. And the sight they see, well, let's just say it was something. An issue was rolled, and they did not stand a chance, so they were apprehended. One of the first time a bar appears in the story is to hit one of the girl guards, something that would be a recurring joke throughout the campaign. They were thrown in cells, and while they were RPing in voice chat, I gravely mes messaged GM, sending over a quest giver NPC I had prepared last night. Simply adding a few prison and related attributes, she was a Siamese Tabaxi Ranger named Milkweed.
GM thanked me for this and introduced it to the party. So, um, there's this reading off sheet. Mysterious Vaxi, a far cream with brown and gray spots in certain areas. I pin her to the wall and slowly kiss her and make her feel good. What the fuck? I want to. What the hell do I do? Tell them no. What if they get mad? They try to assault a cat. So GM tells them that they can't do that and for the rest of the session and they try to escape prison. The next session is the same and GM is really feeling the weight of four Ishmer or hobos. I'll admit, I don't know about as much as I should have, but at this, this time, my mom's sister had died, so we were grieving. Next thing of note happened in the next session when Druid complained about, about me, but also hit on me. He said I was dumb and way too lazy and not doing anything, and he would love to take my empty head and do something about it. What? I left a call for a bet. It's very freaked out and has to be back to rejoin. Okay, um... And then during this part, whatever, or, or, or when, I was, I think, just I'm paying for, for more attention on their posts. Anyway... This isn't the DM's fault. These players are horrible. Two more stories. I really hope they aren't as bad as, as this. Party member wants to... be him. Evening everyone, first time poster, long time lurker. I come to you today to tell you the story of, mem of a member of my party. We'll call him Darren. This story begins roughly, excuse me, a week ago when DM, also my roomie, and I discussed with Darren his character concept for our upcoming Grim Hollow campaign. This campaign was essentially going to take place in a homebrewed, vaguely Japan inspired island within the world of Grim Hollow. For some background, Darren, DM, and I recently watched the show Shogun on Hulu. So we all were a little bit in a samurai phase. Darren was very into it, and to show there is a character that is an outsider, a European settler arriving in Japan for the first time. Most other characters in the show refer to him as Anjin. I mean Anjin, the Japanese word for pilot. Darren got super attached to his moniker, and insists that his character, a Witcher in I I heard him Utsujin and Bloodhunter would also be called the Yanjing. This wasn't all though. He also wanted to be referred to as a Witcher and wanted the DM to fully rip the Witcher organization from its setting and paste it into her campaign. <sighs> Which you can actually do if you're not recording it. DM and I very patiently tried to explain to Darren that while he could be something adjacent, adjacent to a Witcher, it would have to be called something else at the very least. 
Additionally, we have to explain that while some NPCs may refer to him as Anjan, if they witness him selling into port, then most people would not know him as such. The discussion went on for hours. And only ended when Darren basically gave up, seeming to only want the conversation to be over. Following this, Darren was mostly silent with us. Up until this point, Darren had been visiting us to hang out for weeks and was actively talking to us every day. I hardly heard from him until the point of the campaign when I asked him if he still wanted to play. He only replied with, probably. He missed our session zero and only until the night beforehand. He then put the finishing details on his characters. This is where the campaign comes in. Oh my god, how long is this going to be? Okay. There needed it a ride. So I, this is my haunted sorcerer, want in to pick him up. With the M and our oath of redemption paladin. The frogs began tonight when he got in my car and we immediately recognized that he was high as a kite. I honestly thought he was depressed from how slow and solemn he was, but he was just completely zonked out. Throughout the session, Darren would later er, er, hit his dad pin so often that it died. But moving on, we began the campaign in a tavern, per usual. However, I was not with the rest of the party as I had been captured and put on display in the local shopkeep. Later on, the party arrives at the store and gets in an argument with the owner, trying to work their way in roleplay so they that they can free me and I'm into the party. However, Darren is doing an okay enough job trying his best to intimidate the shopkeeper. However, our ranger decided it a bit rashly to break me out of the cage and then flee the scene. Blunder for sure, but one he would attempt to, he would go on to attempt to correct. The shopkeeper flees to tell the guards what happened, and I look for the dagger he had stolen from me, using my ability as a disembodied hand to fade into the ethereal plane. Hmm. <sighs> Darren's character should not know who I am, where I disappeared to, you, or what I'm looking for, but he insists on helping me search. When DM and I explain to him why he wouldn't be doing that, he says, Okay, well I just leave the sword in. We didn't really object, but we thought it strange he was willing to criminalize us even more. With that, we make a run for it and get in a chase with the guards. However, the ranger gets himself captured and seeing as he's the only one who understands the local language, I decided it best to go into jail with him. This ends up being the case for all of us, except our lovely rogue who manages to slip away in the meantime. DM is very clearly off-put by how derailed that things have gotten. But she concocts a solution by having this she he show of this port town and visit us in prison. I try my best to explain my situation and why I did nothing wrong and even went on to try and un and cover for the ranger. And this almost works. The she Cho decides to trust Marcy and offer us a job in order to clear ourselves of the charges. A god said, given our DM to get us back on course. However, Darren defies the street show and says, I want compensation. Everyone's jaw drops in his omen. We told him our character that is making a mistake, and the demon even says, Are you sure? The paladin goes on to state, You have no reason to do this. Darren doubles down, insisting that he, if he's doing work, he's doing okay. Now it should be noted that by this point, Darren is so high that he's practically that he's been practically falling asleep. So I don't think he, so I don't even think he understands what was happening at the moment. 
A guard brings out Chopper Luck, and after some more rattling from Darren, Chopper just decides to kick us all out the ci of the city, completely locking us out the 16 hours of content the DM had written. At least, not without some seriously risk infiltration of the city. We call a session Darren make it home. He decides to do a follow up session tomorrow, but then. But when asked if he's going to be there, only said, I'll let you know. <sighs> DM Paladin and I spend the rest of the night drinking, smoking, and about Darren. We decide that if he shows up tomorrow, he's going to say A game, or else he's out. If that's true, we're going to roll back time until the moment Darren has his head, head chopped off, and proceed from there. And that's all she wrote. TLDR, Larry wants to be the richer, wants to be Witcher, Sir Ogun Man, ends up getting super high and derailing the whole campaign. Main character complex and then uh, just not even paying attention. <sighs> and then we have this final story. From player or am I too sensitive? Okay, I know this isn't am I the ass. Well, but I need to I need someone to check me before I raise concerns to the DM. We have in our group a player role called Charlie. Do not be freaking three hour long. On, on a mighty asshole post. Okay, thank goodness. It's just a whole lot of comments. I play a role called Charlie. Charlie and I met in college over a decade ago. We became friends, were in marching band together, and we eventually became roommates for a number of years. He introduced me to D&D via Pathfinder back in 2012. We we're the same age. Charlie and I have been playing for years. His recent behavior at the table, though, is really straining our friendship. I'll leave out the personal Discord drama and focus on the game itself. When I try to run games that aren't murder hobo games but instead investigative horror, he now chooses to not play. He decided that it's too stressful, which is fine and fair due to the content of the stuff. But he is a murder hobo in our regular game. I'm convinced he really just doesn't want to have these repercussions of his actions. <sighs> when I have run horror games, not the indeed with him there, he refused to make his own character that relies on free gens or me to provide him a fully developed character sheet. He then complains about not feeling connected to the world. We've played this ism for almost a year now, as our someone is missing game. Every time we do something in the regular game, he says, This would be great for us as a module. Well, and every time I respond, on the party is one. Because there is. I've advocated for the system enough, and he chooses not to play. Making suggestions that we should play this in horror setting is a slap in the face. Why can't our horror be this instead? It's a tone, and I do not appreciate it. He gets up from the table in the middle of our regular DM to do any number of things. Including work on his printer, which is loudly running directly behind the MSR, trying to run the game. Interrupting the game to get food orders, looking for many pink, or grabbing a cat and carrying it around the table and telling everyone individually, Pet the kitty. If it's not his turn in initiative, he pulls out his phone and, with a volume, starts doing Duolingo dailies. He regularly diverts everyone's attention for the game to Discord to look at memes. We play in person. Last session, we invited a childhood friend over to play. His friend has never played DD. We have a full party. We don't ask for our character sheets. The DM was not asked. The DM vetoed him playing, which led to the friend sitting at the table awkwardly to play DD without 
What Larry felt about it was that he shut him up there in play, which caused a lot of a ton of cross people to talk about life and not me. In my opinion, he shouldn't have been at all. He never hung out with him another night or said he was going to miss him. But nope, this was his, his solution. I have had a large sit down with the whole group of sessions, sibling out the vert. I'm going to tell you the story of every behavior and buy in. He was, uh, probably going to do a lingo and to change any behavior. This was September or, or October. This dude has a habit of trolling out the, uh, trolling out the narcissist crier anytime he's going to about any of this kind of behavior. He regularly blames ADHD. I won't put the nail in the coffin of this that gets all great and chip, but he's being such an insufferable asshole that I'm fed up with it. Am I crazy or should I advocate removing him from the game? He's actively causing me to not enjoy the game. Okay, so with the reaction I've gotten so far, I'm glad that it is ADHD. It likely is a heavy factor and one that I need to consider. It's probably something he can't quite control. This does put me at an impasse. My options have either been either I can suffer through, I can play about it and hope he is removed, or I can leave. I don't think it's fair necessary to him. Your disability is making me miserable, guilted, or take it across. Your healthcare costs are prohibited for him right now. Tax sector or layoffs, and medicine therapy are not an option. I feel it's punitive for something he can't control that goes against my ethos. Okay, I'm going to say this right now. As someone who has autism and ADHD, among um, many other disorders, your disorder does not excuse you being as as white. I'm going to tell you that right now. And regardless of what other disorder you have, no, I mean, this character person might have. I call it, you know, there what have. They, they are still being an asshole. Let's continue with the arrest. I do notice the other get frustrated with his behavior. We do have to rein him a minute when he gets particularly bad. I talked to one other GM about this privately, and he agrees it's an issue. We're both unconfrontational by nature, so it continues. At the end of the day, I think the only choice that meshes with my personal beliefs is to finish out the current campaign in a regular game, and then take a hiatus tabletop. It sucks, I've grown up with people for years, but it's just unfair for me now and I don't look forward to it anymore. It always feels like a chore. The resentment and I'm getting is souring the experience from, to me. And honestly, I really think that's to happen in, in that time instead. Like going to concerts or writing music. Thanks to everyone for your suggestions, advice, and perspectives. And that was our slash D D horror stories. If you liked that video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!